Okay, welcome to a lesson on fronting. So fronting just means putting something at the front of the sentence that wouldn't normally be there. I mean, usually English sentences go subject, verb, object. So you normally see the subject at the front of the sentence. I, he, Dave, um, the, the teachers, whatever. You normally see the, the subject. But sometimes you don't. And sometimes we put something else at the front of the sentence. <clears throat> now, there are lots of different ways that we can do this, um, but there are a finite number of ways. There are only certain ways that we can put something at the front. So let's look at four different types of fronting. We're going to look at so and such at the front, and we have seen that already. We're going to look at here and there at the front again. I think we might have seen that in another class. We're going to look at fronted prepositional phrases that I don't think we have seen, including fronted prepositions in phrasal verbs. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to look at fronted adjectives as well. And that's one of my favourites, if I'm honest, because I do like fronting. I think fronting is another way that you can make sure you don't have boring sentences. It's another way that you can make sure your sentences become more beautiful because it gives you a wider variety, a wider range of structure if you're using fronting as well as inversion, as well as all sorts of other things as well. Um, so do think, I mean, do have a study of this. We're going to study it now. Do have a go at the questions and do try to activate these constructions in your language, in your speaking, in your writing. So let's have a look at some so and such fronting. And yes, these guys have inversion. And um, one thing to point out right from the beginning is that these guys have inversion and they do use did and do and does. Yeah, where have I written this somewhere? I have written this somewhere. Um, oh, down the bottom. Yeah, in number two, three and four, even though there is inversion, there's no using does or did or do in present simple and past simple. OK, and that's really important because we always use did, do, does, for example, in questions. And questions are the most obvious time when we use inversion. And we always need that, you know, do you smoke? Does he smoke? Did he um, have a shower yesterday? Whatever. And yes, we use them in number one, but we don't use them in two, three or four. And that's important. I don't want you putting it. I don't want you saying here does come the bus. Yeah, it won't work or it, it just or here does the bus come. No, it doesn't work. Here does the bus come. It doesn't work. Don't use does, did. But you do see inversion. So let's do some and such first. You, the general pattern is this, so plus adjective or adverb plus auxiliary verb, did, do, yeah, that's why, so it does use a do, a does, a did, plus subject, plus main verb, plus that, perhaps I should have put main verb here, um, if it has a main verb, yeah, so have a look at my examples, so wonderful, did we feel, yeah, this is the main verb, isn't it, so wonderful, did we feel that um, uh, we decided to, I don't know, <laughs> That's perhaps not the best example. OK, so perhaps something like this. So sad did I feel that I didn't want to go out. Something like that. So sad did I feel that I didn't want to go out. Or so wonderful did I feel that I decided to go out and spend lots of money. So badly. Now we're using an adverb. Yeah. So badly did she dance that nobody wanted to dance with her. I don't know. Something like that. I'm not a great dancer either. But you notice you can use so plus adjective or adverb. And then if it's in past simple, you'll need did. If it's in present simple, you'll need do or does. Yeah. So wonderful. Does he play chess? Oh, let's make it an adverb. Then so wonderfully does he play chess that I think he will become a grandmaster. Something like that. So wonderfully does. Yeah. And so you do need a do, a does, a did. And yes, we use inversion. You know, uh, we've got did she is subject auxiliary inversion. This one's called subject auxiliary inversion. And we don't do that with two, three and four. Really wanted to uh, make that point clearly. OK, such plus B plus that we can do this. We can say such was the weather that we decided to stay at home. And that's pretty much the same as so bad. Uh, so so terrible was the weather that we decided to stay at home. But you can just say such was the weather, meaning the weather was such. The weather was 
in such a way that we decided to stay at home. So be aware that you confront such without an adjective, but still it's clear that you mean the weather was so bad. Yes, so bad was the weather that we decided to stay at home. Such was the weather that we decided to stay at home. So that's another one to learn. So another one that you might see. Now, don't forget, we also use so much and so little plus auxiliary verb, subject, main verb.